Yeah, baby. Look how nasty. It's the moment of truth. Will the Cheap Budget Boxster Series 2 start in 3, 2, 1? What's going on guys? Welcome back to JR Garage and welcome to a video that I most certainly did not see coming because I had no plans on buying a new car this week, but I just flew into San Francisco, California to help Sasha move into Stanford. And while I was here, what do you know? I had a little extra time. I popped on Copart to do a little searching in case I found a good deal, you know? And what do you know? About 10 minutes later, I come across a 1999 Porsche Boxster. I'll throw up some pictures. Really cool spec. You know, looks like a pretty clean car overall. And guess what? It wasn't crashed, hence why there's no damage on the car. It was donated. So you guys have heard us talk about it before, but basically when somebody just doesn't want to deal with a car anymore, doesn't want to store it, drive it, whatever, maybe they upgrade, they want to get rid of it, they give it to charity. So it's going to a good cause the proceeds they tend to have clean titles and sometimes they have little to nothing wrong with them but this one surely appears to have something wrong with it because it won't light up it doesn't run and they don't know the mileage on the car so those are all big red flags right but in Porsche world for us, these are actually green flags because this most likely means that they were not able to access the battery, which is under the trunk, which is electronically operated. So if you don't have battery life, you can't open the trunk to get to the battery to jump it to start the car. Bad design, right? We've talked about this before. Our first budget Boxster, you guys remember the yellow Porsche Boxster? That was the same deal. Wouldn't light up. They didn't know if it ran. They didn't know the mileage. We ended up buying the car and then we found the emergency release cable, our little secret method to get to the battery in order to start it. And what do you know it fired right up it had very little damage we fixed it up and we enjoyed that car we ended up giving it away for free through free car giveaways but i don't know can we get lucky twice can we hit two back-to-back -back home runs and find another porsche boxer that simply has a dead battery jump start it and be well on our way today you guys are going to find out because we just rolled up to the copart yard i'm going to go into the office give them the buyer number lot number and they will pull it out on the forklift and i'm going to go to work so get this the first time around we won this car for one thousand three hundred and fifty dollars I'm like, you've got to be kidding me because these wheels alone, really rare BBS Sport Classic wheels, 18 inch upgraded, two sets have sold on eBay recently for about $2,000 per set. So when we initially won it for $1,450, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna sell these wheels for 2,000 bucks and have another free Porsche Boxster. Uh, but unfortunately, the charity declined my bid of $1,450 and they countered like 3,300 bucks or something like that. And I just met him in the middle at $2,000. 350 bucks, 2,400 bucks, something like that. That was the final price that we agreed on for the Porsche Boxster. I didn't want to wait. I just wanted to jump on it because I think it was a great deal. Clean title, 1999 Porsche Boxster with this kind of mileage and condition would probably be worth like, I don't know, maybe 10 grand or more. So this thing could be a huge jackpot. If you guys enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of it. We're constantly buying these crazy auction cars, trying to come up with these big wins. I have about an hour and 20 minutes. He doesn't have a lot. <laughs> hour and 20 minutes until they close so i'm gonna have to try to fix this car really fast and attempt to possibly drive it home almost a thousand miles to arizona check it out there she is guys oh my goodness it's dusty it's filthy yeah baby sweet oh cool bam Look at that. Oh, right off the bat, a little bit of quarter damage. I didn't see this in the pictures. Uh-oh, it's kind of hard to tell because you got to get the reflection just right, but that's fixable, whatever. These wheels though, these are worth big money. Oh, check out the tires. 13 of 19, relatively new Pilot Sport AS3, so good Michelin tires all the way around. You know, that, that's a that's a good first sign of a used car is if they have matching tires all the way around, especially if they have a lot of, you know, tread left. That's a free thousand bucks right there. Can you guys see that? Looks like nearly brand new pads. Let's feel the rotors, if there's any lip on them or anything. Very little, so like good brakes, great tires. Hear me out, guys. I know this car is probably the dirtiest, filthiest, nastiest car on the exterior that we've ever bought, but look beyond that. See through the dirt, okay? We'll get this cleaned up. Like, don't worry, that could clean up. Oh, let's check out the interior. Okay, not bad, not bad. Sure enough, they already tried the trick to get the uh, battery uh, through the emergency, like, fuse, pop, panel, battery, jump thing, but that never works on these Copart cars. We always end up having to go, you know, through the emergency release, which I'm about to, I'm gonna try to do here in just a minute. Um, but overall, let's take a look at the interior. Um, 
Whoa, not bad. Uh, wow, it's actually, everything's in really good shape. Look at that, no cracks on the dash. Oh, I just can't believe how dirty this car is. This is, <laughs> I can't see anything. This is by far the worst, but this will be the most satisfying cleanup, uh, you know, if we get to that point when I drive it. But I don't know. Again, like I said in the intro, I might drive this car a thousand miles home if it fires up. But I don't know. That just seems like a crazy idea. Like, is it really about to fire up here and just start up? Oh, one other key piece of information. The Carfax, the latest entry in the end of 2021, so about six months ago, the last entry was State of California failed emissions inspection. That leads me to believe that most likely either the catalytic converters are bad and it's not passing the sniff test or the check engine light is on for some reason and of course they're not going to pass a car with a check engine light on. So most likely if I somehow get this thing to fire up, I'm guessing there's going to be a check engine light on, a warning light on, something like that. Didn't get it past emissions, didn't get it registered and then he just, you know, said, "Oh well, I'll just donate the thing." So that's my theory. You know, I think I'm going out on a whim. But if you guys somehow know the story of this car, you're the one who donated it, please get in touch with me. Why'd you donate it? But I think that's gonna come clear here once we try to fire it up. We still got a lot to do to get to that point because we gotta rip out the fender liner, get to the emergency release. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. Anyway, as for the interior. So it has the base seats, not the sports seats. That would have been the holy grail jackpot if we had the $2,000 sports seats that are similar to the GT3 and stuff like you guys have seen in past videos. Uh, but at least we have those upgraded wheels which are probably worth about $2,000 as well. Looks like we have the upgraded sound system. Our other boxer didn't have a speaker up here and here and nor did it have memory seats over here. Oh wait, wait a second. It's a manual release? Wait, what the heck? I don't get it. That's so weird. On our other Boxster from 2001, it has just a little small button, but this, it looks like a handle, but you go to pull it up, it's not a handle. I think it is genuinely just a button that you hit and it pops it electronically still. So I got tricked there for a second, but pretty clean in here. I can't complain. Oh yeah, there's no glove box. It's just back here. Anything? Oh, oh yes, a second key. Heck yeah. Dang, we never get second keys with auction purchases. All right, come on, come on. This is These are good signs. Let's see if it'll fire up. Okay, l let me at least try this emergency release trick. Okay, 10 minutes later, the reason this isn't working is because the post that goes right here to pull out to pop the battery, don't worry, this isn't it, that's just to pull out the fuses, is gone. So you can't even do that trick anymore. So now we're gonna have to use my special trick of going through the fender liner, but I just looked up there. Not only does it have really hard hardware to get out without having tools to get the fender liners off to get to the pull cable, it looks like with this year, it may not be electronic and it could be manual. I, I keep I keep watching a bunch of these videos. Everybody's got a different opinion on like how to get in. I'm reading forum posts, but uh, this guy has the same year the same year Boxster, and he says that above the wheel, you don't even have to take the fender liner off, is the cord hidden behind the fender liner. Oh geez. All right, so he says it's up here. You guys are not gonna be able to see this. He said feel back here. Okay, I do not feel anything. Oh, wait, I do. Holy crap. Okay. Oh. Oh, gosh. Come on. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here we go. No. I lost it. Oh, got it back. <laughs> oh, I feel it. I have no room. I'm getting so dirty. Okay, there we go. There we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, you see this, guys? He's right. Oh, my gosh. On the early cars, I guess pre-2001 is the cable, and he says you just pull this to the right, and it'll pop the trunk. Oh my gosh, I just heard it. I just heard it pop. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, come on. No. Yes, yes, yes. Yes! Victory! The battery's under here! I cannot believe this, guys. Oh, okay, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get out, get, get on out. Oh, let's turn the things. Yes! You guys do not get how hyped I am. Honestly, I was very ill prepared to take on this car project right now, 30 minutes before they close, without a backup plan, a truck and transport in case it doesn't, you know, open the hood to get to the battery, no jumper cables, no tools. I literally thought it was gonna be like our other car where you had to remove the wheel, somehow get this little like, get the other hex screws off. Like it is not fun doing this, especially when you have no parts, getting these fender liners off are an absolute pain in the butt. So the fact that the early cars have that little pull cable that you simply pull, 
without even taking off the wheel or the fender liner, simply reaching up there with your hands, no tools necessary to get to the battery, you guys do not get how ecstatic I am. And now I have the jump pack. We're gonna go for a first start here. I can't believe it. 15 minutes later, we are about ready for our first startup, or at least an attempt, I don't know. Again, there could have been a big reason he donated it. Hopefully, geez, I'm already dirty. <laughs> okay, um, I really, really hope this car doesn't have any big issues or like a blown up engine. As you guys know, IMS bearings kind of plague Porsches from this era and cause the engines to go boom. So obviously I hope this engine didn't blow up and then he decided, ah, you know, I'm not gonna fix it. Might as well just, you know, give it to charity. I just hope it's some small issue. We've struck gold, gotten so lucky in the past with donated vehicles. The C5 Corvette, the C320 Mercedes, Porsche 944s, I can go on and on. So many cars, people just don't have the time to mess with, store, drive anymore. Maybe they upgrade to something new and they don't feel like selling the car, so they just donate it to charity to get the tax write off and, and feel good in their heart. But ultimately the car ends up going to Copart, sold at auction to the highest bidder and money does go to the charity. So, you know, it makes me feel good too that I'm supporting charities by bidding up these cars and paying more for them than other people would, you know? But uh, this is just, another one of those cases okay enough of me talking the moment you've all been waiting for will this thing fire up i'm like almost shaking this is crazy the guys are watching me this whole time they're like hey man good luck yeah so the guys here are super nice they know exactly how much of a pain in the butt it is to get up uh to the emergency release this is a fairly new battery too eight six of 21 h-a-r-u spec whatever that means oh boy looks like this thing hasn't run in a long time okay um i can't even check the oil and stuff because you once again need battery i think to get to the engine cover yeah i mean there's nothing i can do it's cool how it's got a cover here and it looks like the spare tire so that's nice anything else down here uh nope just the cover okay black on the negative Red, positive, on the, okay, I think we're on. All right, how do I like boot this thing up? Come on, okay, I don't know, maybe it's going, let's give that a try. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. Boom, 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 boom. keys on the left. Oh, no. All right, must not be hooked up. Let's try that again. All right, the guys were nice enough to give me a different jump pack. Again, do as I say, not as I do. Most co-parts, you know, you won't just be able to borrow their jump packs and stuff. You gotta like bring your own stuff. And again, better off just bring your own trailer and trailer at home. Do not do what I'm doing and just expecting them to drop it and you being able to magically make it run. You know, that's not, that's not what should happen. I'm just doing it because even if I fail, it's good YouTube content. Oh, come on, how does this work? Is there like an on? Okay, I must be doing something wrong. Uh. Okay, we're trying a new technique. I took the terminals off the battery, and now we're ho hooking up the jump pack just straight to the terminals. Okay, I heard something. I hear life. Yes! Oh my gosh. What? It only has 116,000 miles. Okay, I swore it was like, I thought it was 150. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Well, it's hooked up. Let's give it a try. Oh gosh, I hope there's oil in this thing. Okay, transmission feels good, e-brakes on. Okay guys, the moment of truth. Will the cheap budget Boxster Series 2 start in three, two, one? Yes, yes, okay, it runs. Okay, I cannot believe this. Okay, but I do hear a little ticking noise. Hopefully that's just oil getting up to the engine since it's been sitting for a while. Oh, baby. You guys hear that, though? Okay, it's going away. Come on, I really hope it's just oil circulating. Oh, no, it's still kind of there. Uh, okay. Whew, AC works, that's nice. I can use that right now. Okay, will she at least move up? It definitely seems like it's misfiring a little bit, maybe. Okay, let's see. Clutch in, first gear, e-brake off. Yep, we're moving. Okay, reverse. Boom, got reverse. Okay, it is working. It just has a slight engine tap. Hmm, weird, I wonder what that is. But I can't get the stupid engine cover open because this won't work so i don't know how to get to the rear trunk because it's stuck shut i'm trying to check like the engine oil level and stuff but i can't mm, what do you guys think about this noise 
I don't really care at this point. The fact that the thing runs, not my biggest concern, this little noise. Hopefully it's something minor. I don't know, I don't know. Is it a lifter? Is it a valve? Is it a IMS bearing about to blow up? I don't know. But at least it's running, that's a start. Okay, I gotta get this cleaned up. They have some paper towels and a, a hose over there, so I'm gonna try to clean this up and then uh, maybe drive to a gas station. So I'm still trying to get in the trunk and I'm pulling up some more YouTube videos and this guy says all you have to do is lock and unlock the car and it'll reset it and free these up to make them work again. So while it's running, I'm, I'm gonna try to keep it running so that the battery can charge. I'm gonna get that spare key. Let's try to lock and unlock it and see if that fixes our problem. <laughs> that locked, okay locked. Now unlock. Okay, lock, unlock, and then they should work, he says. Oh, they work, oh my gosh! Wow! So it's because the battery died, the car thought it was like getting stolen, and it, it for security, it locks those so that nobody can just jump into your trunk and steal your stuff. So with just an unlock and a lock of the key, boom, we're now in. I'm gonna check the oil level. Oh, this is just great. Why is everything going my way? Pretty much everything is going better than I expected. Except the fact there's a small tapping noise. I, d I don't like that, I don't like that. But I do like everything else. And now we're in the trunk. Let's check the fluid levels and uh, see if we see any bad signs. Once again, well taken care of trunk. Like it's not, sometimes when you got cars that are just like full of garbage and trash, like that's not a good sign. Uh, okay, let's check the oil. Oh, I'd have to turn off to check the oil level. Ah, I wanna keep it running. Uh-oh, uh-oh, looks like a little mouse nest in here. I was just saying no trash in here, but Mouse nests are probably far worse, oh boy. Okay, we're back, got some soapy wet rags. I'm gonna hit these windows. Wait a second, take a listen, the, the knocking noise kinda went away. Oh my gosh, maybe it did just need some time to really cycle that oil through, get it warmed up, heated up. Oh, this is, this is a good sign. Oh my gosh, look how nasty. <laughs> Holy smokes, oh my god. It's got literally, I always joke that a car has an inch of dust. That literally has a mountain of dust. Holy crap. Oh boy. I'm just getting it to the point where I can see and then I'm gonna take it to the gas station. Maybe run it through a car wash or something. Oh my gosh. This is incredible. Oh my gosh. Knocking noise going away. All right, who can sign this thing? Let's see who it's from. Uh, there, Auction Dealer Services. Yeah, that's just one of the big, they represent, I think, a bunch of charities. So I don't know exactly. Okay, getting some of this nasty dust off. Golly, that's bad. All right, maybe that's good enough for me to see. As of right now, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Thank you to whoever donated this car to charity. I'm not exactly sure why you did it because it seems like a really nice car. Hopefully I don't find out a reason later. Oh my, okay, we're about to go for a first drive over to a car wash. Holy. Okay, just hit five o'clock. They just closed and I'm gonna get out of here before they lock me in. The first drive in this car. Oh my gosh, it's working. And I don't hear the ticking noise anymore. Wow. I literally can't believe it. Look, we're staying pretty cool on temps, right? At 200 and the cooling fans do work. Sorry, it's dark. It's really right outside overpowering the camera. Got half a tank of fuel. That's worth that's worth 60 bucks alone in today's day and age. All right, AC works, but I turned it off just to not stress out the car. Uh, we'll check the top later. We gotta get this thing clean, number one. I, I can't believe it, guys. I literally can't believe it. Here come all the comments. This is staged. Like you're working with Copart on the inside. No, guys, absolutely not. I saw this thing and I was like, hmm, this is interesting. Dash won't light up, hood isn't popped. Most likely they can't get to the battery. My favorite secret sauce, you know. Holy crap. All the employees have super sick cars here. Wow, it's like a mini car show here. Oh my gosh. Now I'm not saying go find a Porsche on Copart that doesn't light up and bid on it and think you can do what we just did and jump it and have a perfectly good car. That does not normally happen, which is why I'm so in shock that we literally struck gold once again. <laughs> okay, to the car wash, out on the main road for the first time. Again, guys, trailer your cars, but I have a trip permit. It's a clean title car, so I'm legal, but do not do what I'm doing unless you know your stuff and... Uh-oh, we have the temperature sensor warning going off even though we're not running that hot, so I don't get why it's warning me. Uh... 
I don't know. Is like the sensor wrong and really it is overheating? I don't know. Seems to be running okay. I just did my first shift, it's all working. I did let it idle for like 30 minutes in the dusty, it's probably it's dust all over the intakes and stuff. Uh, gosh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I'm going to the car wash, I don't want to turn it off because then it won't restart because the battery's dead. Ah, uh, shoot. Okay, another thing, the blinker doesn't work. The right, the right turn blinker doesn't work, it doesn't stay up, so I do not have right turn signal unless I hold it. Okay, we're almost there. It's still flashing at me, but we're almost to the car wash. Okay, we made it. The dirtiest car in all of San Jose right now. Yes, let's go. We made it. All right, it still says we're overheating, but I don't think we are, so I don't know what it's talking about. Okay, will the car start back up if I turn it off? Place your bets now. If it doesn't start, then I'm in trouble because I don't have a jumper cable, I don't have a, somebody to help me, I don't have a jump pack, so. This car, I just cannot believe how dusty and dirty it is. This is gonna make for the biggest transition ever. I'm still letting it run because I just don't want this battery to die, but I think I'm gonna turn it off now. Oh gosh, please, oh no, it's already getting dim. Oh no. Oh, it already looks dim. I don't think it's gonna restart. Okay, will she start? Oh crap, definitely not. Completely out of juice. Dang it, this is what I feared would happen. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the road. A bystander was nice enough to see that I had the hood popped and was struggling and he's like, here, you need a jump? He had a jump pack, thank goodness. All right, back on the road. I guess I need to drive it a little more before I turn it off. Okay, update, so I made it to AutoZone here where I wanted them to check the battery, see if it was gonna come back to life and if it wasn't, I was just gonna buy a new battery because it's only 70 bucks. But they said, you know, we could try to charge it for a few hours and then you can come back and we'll hope it's fully charged. So that's what I'm gonna do. Instead of buying the battery, I might as well try to use this one. It's from 2021, so it's not that old. So I hope just after a quick charge, it'll be good enough to not leave me stranded in the middle of Death Valley as I drive back to Arizona uh, tomorrow. But here it is a little bit more. Now the dirt's off, well, <laughs> most of the dirt's off. It, it still is just filthy. Uh, I still gotta go through another car wash, but as you can see, the paint is actually really pretty. It's like this burgundy purple maroon type thing. So we'll come back in a few hours, see if the battery's fully charged. It'll be nighttime by then, so I'll just pick this vlog up in the morning. But there you guys have it. Man, it's looking like a great buy so far. Well guys, three hours later, we're back at AutoZone. The battery did not take a charge, unfortunately. So it was a bad battery, no problem. I got a new one for only $69. And now we're gonna give it a test for the first time. Will she start? Three, two, one. Yep, fires right up. 